Hello, this is Mrs. Russo showing you how we're teaching regrouping. Regrouping um, with division is the similar way that kind of we grew up knowing, where you um, write the numbers underneath the division bar and carry on. Well, I wanted to show to you not necessarily that method, but how we're tying what we've learned prior to this into understanding why they're doing regrouping the way they are. So today I presented that they need to draw 68 into base 10 blocks. So they wrote, they drew 6, 10 rods, and 8 ones. Now they normally would draw 5 circles. And the first step would be, I need to put the 10s equally into each circle. So they would take 1, Oh, I drew five circles, or six circles. So I'm going to raise, because that's wrong. <laughs> so then they would realize, okay, well, I have one ten rod left, so I would have to break that up and make it into ten more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now they should have 18 ones all together that they would want to put evenly into these five groups. So one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. They go, uh-oh, I can't put 3 equally in. So I have 1, 2, 3 that are left out. So they would normally come up with 13, remainder 3 as their answer, usually in base 10 box to model. Well, this isn't the most efficient way, and they're always looking to increase what they're doing. So I showed them the long division today. So we asked how many fives can we, how many sixes can we put into five groups? They could put one in each. Just like we did down here, we put one in each group, and that's what this one represents. So then now, how many did they use? Well, in this problem, they used, they used up five ones. So they already used five of the six tenths. They have one left over, which was this guy right here. Then they had to bring down their 18, and that's how they originally created these 18 ones. Now they need to divide up the 18 ones equally in those five groups. Well, how many did they get equal in each group? They've got three. So they put three. Well, how many did they end up using? Well, we used 15 total, and there was three left over. And that ends up being your remainder three. So this is just how you can tie into that. To add into more of that, I like to teach a mnemonic device when teaching division. So I use, does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? So I like to do this method because it helps them know their steps because long division is very long. So when I do, let's do 311 divided by 2. So they must divide. How many groups of 2 can you get out of 3? And they would say 1. Oh, I'm trying to scoop that up there. I had a problem with recording. So that should be 1. They're done with divide. Now they're multiplying. 2 times 1 is 2. Now they're at subtract. They have 1. Now they are to check, is 1 smaller? If it's yes, then they can bring down the next 1. Now they start the process all over again. How many 2's go into 11? 5. They think better in division, you can say 2 times what gets you close to 11, but not going over, because you don't want them to pick a bigger number. So they do 5. Now we multiply. 2 times 5, the digit they just put up there, 10. We're at subtract. You should have 1 left over. Check. Is 1 smaller than 2? Yes. Bring down the next digit. Now we're all the way back up to divide again. How many 2's go into 11? Well, I hope they remember from the previous one that 5 goes into that. Now we're at 5 times 2 is 10. Subtract. And I have 1 left after all these steps. 
Now they need to bring down. If there's nothing to bring down, that guy is left over and is your remainder. So your answer is 155 remainder 1. Please let me know if you have any questions. I just wanted to show you how you can relate modeling division into the regrouping method to dividing. Thank you.